Hi, friends. I'm Pastor Bill Bailey. And I'm Sally. And welcome to Happy Gospel Church here in Bradenton, Florida. We're so glad to have you on today's broadcast. I don't believe it's by accident that we've connected today. I trust that God has something special to say to you, and that's why we're together today. And listen, we'd love for to get connected with you. We're on all the social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. You can subscribe to our YouTube account for all of our service details and other program archives. But let's connect together, and I believe that God is about to speak to you. Thanks so much for watching us here at Happy Gospel Church. We're a non-denominational, spirit-filled church that loves Jesus. Yes, and we amen. love people. Let's go in today's service already in progress. The world's largest gospel music festival is coming to the number one Christian attraction, the Ark Encounter Theme Park in Williamstown, Kentucky. August 2nd through September 10th, 40 days and 40 nights of gospel music featuring virtually every major name in gospel music. The Isaacs, The Hoppers, Karen Peck and New River, Ernie Haas and Signature Sound, Triumphant Quartet, Mark Trammell Quartet, Jason Crabb, Brian Free and Assurance, Jeff and Sherry Easter, Joseph Habedin, The Primitive Quartet, Michael Combs, Ivan Parker, and many more. Amazing messages daily. Daily by speakers like Dr. David Jeremiah, Dr. Johnny Hunt, Pastor C.T. Townsend, Dr. Jerry Vines, Dr. Tim Hill, and even Ken Ham. Tickets to the Ark Encounter will give you free access to all of the concerts. Plus, you'll tour the life-size Noah's Ark, see the zoo, the camel rides, the food, the fun, and so much more. Don't miss the world's largest Christian music festival, August 2nd through September 10th. For more information, go to 40daysofgospelmusic.com or call 859-727-2220.
5 verse 12 says, Wherefore by, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death has passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Say that last word together with me. All have sinned. Every one of us have sinned. Death was passed by one man, Adam, to each and every one of us. That's why if you've heard me preach for long, you've heard me say many things like this. A baby doesn't have to learn how to lie. A baby learns or a toddler learns they know how to lie inerrantly. The first word out of their mouth more than likely was no. There could be uh, two of the same kinds of toys in a room two little ones in the room and each one of those little ones wants both toys it's an it's an error in them why it's because death has been passed down from adam to each and every one of us for all have sinned come on class say it together with me all have sinned and come short of the glory of god the old timers used to preach it like this the ground is level at the foot of the cross every one of us needs jesus come on class Every one of us needs Jesus. Can you say amen? amen? And so death was passed to each and every one of us. But Galatians 3.13, turn over to Galatians 3.13. Paul then writes and says this. He says, Christ has redeemed us. Somebody holler, redeemed us. From the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. So with this sinful condition, we then have inherited the curse. What is the curse? It is the effect of sin in our life. What is that curse? That curse manifests itself in lack, in sickness, in poverty, in depression, and ultimately in death. But listen to what Paul writes. He says this, Christ has redeemed us. <laughs> Glory to God. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So Christ has redeemed me from depression. I'm going to preach and get myself happy. Christ has redeemed me from lack and poverty. Christ has redeemed me from anxiety and emotional instability. Christ has redeemed me from my sinful habits and perversion. Christ has redeemed me from every curse, not just some, but every curse. Somebody holler, Christ has redeemed me. So you need to receive that you've been redeemed by the blood. Somebody holler, redeemed by the blood. Boy, that's a whole message all within itself. But receive that today. Whatever you're battling today, whatever struggle you have today, believe God, Christ has redeemed me. Christ has set me free. Christ, by the blood of Jesus, has given me freedom today. And I receive it today in Jesus' name. Number one, redeemed by the blood. Number two, I have fellowship with God through the blood. Somebody holler, fellowship with God. We're talking about the precious blood of Christ. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Hebrews 10, 19. Listen to what the writer says. Having therefore, brethren, boldness. Somebody holler, boldness. Boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Somebody holler, amen. amen. So verse 19 says, we can enter boldly into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. In other words, I have fellowship with God by the blood. Everybody say fellowship with God. 
Now, to me, it's amazing to have fellowship with God because he says I can come boldly to God. Well, well that, that goes against much religious teaching because a lot of religious teachings uh, teaches fear to keep us afraid of God. Now, let's understand a little bit about the fear of the Lord. That's not what I'm talking about. The fear of the Lord, the Bible says, is the beginning of all wisdom. Fear of God basically can be equated to reverence and respect. I reverence who he is. I respect what he does. And because of that, I have the fear of the Lord in my life. But the fear of God does not draw me away from God, but rather draws me to God. Are you following me? A, a, a righteous and holy fear of God will not make me afraid of the Lord. But some people have been brought up in a religious environment that has taught them or given them this connotation to be afraid of God. And because of that, they don't really have a, a true relationship with God as their heavenly father. But when you understand the bloodline, you understand who you are and who he is. The bloodline says that when I got saved, Romans 8, I was adopted into the family of God through the spirit of adoption. And whereby I can cry, Abba, Father. Or in other words, Daddy, because I have been grafted into the family of God. How? By the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. And so when, uh, when the writer says here that we have boldness to enter, how am I bold to enter into the presence of God? How can I come boldly into the holy place? Not because of my own merit, not because of my own righteousness, not because of my money and my social status, but I can come boldly into the throne room of God, into the holy place of God. Why? Because of the bloodline, because of the blood of Jesus, because Jesus made a way by his blood. I am now a child of the Most High God. Somebody say amen. You can come boldly. Now listen, when mom and dad were still living and then after dad passed, uh, I would go visit mom and dad or visit mom in South Georgia. I went by there not too long ago. And when I would go to their place, they owned a duplex. They lived on one side, collected rent on the other side to pay pay for the duplex and and that was kind of their retirement strategy and mom lived there as long as she could after dad's passing before we kidnapped her and moved her uh, here to Florida and I remember going there when I would get there we'd always arrive in the middle of the night and we would leave at night I don't know why it's kind of a Bailey thing we drive at night and we'd arrive two three four o'clock in the morning Mama would always have chocolate milk and sweet tea in the refrigerator, hallelujah. Yoo-hoo's for the kids and sweet tea for me. And then when we'd wake up in the morning, mysteriously, Mama would have already went and went to Krispy Kreme Donuts and had them fresh there so that when we woke up, which was typically later, uh, they would be waiting on us. But when I would get to Mom's, it'd be 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, but I wouldn't have to knock on the door. Because I had a key to get into mom's place. You know why? Because my last name's Bailey. And so I'd walk in. I wasn't worried about any. That, that, that was my parents' home. If I wanted to go to the refrigerator, I didn't have to ask, Mom, can I please have some tea? No, my last name's Bailey. I'm the son. I have access to the refrigerator. Glory to God. When I'd wake up the next day, and I'd want to watch television. If mom wasn't watching her soaps, I would walk in there, sit in my daddy's chair. He was already gone. I'd sit in my dad's chair and I'd turn on the television and turn the channel. You know why? I didn't ask for permission because my last name was Bailey. I had a rightful place in that home. Could I submit to you today? You have a rightful place in the family of God as a son and daughter of the Most High. You don't have to be afraid of your heavenly Father. You have been given fellowship. You have been brought nigh by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Thank God for the blood today. Can we do that? 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He who knew no sin became sin, that you might be the righteousness of God in right standing before God. 
by who Jesus is and what he did at the cross. And when I am in right position, I don't have to come begging to God. I don't have to come pleading with God. But rather, I can come boldly into the throne room of grace. Make my petitions known before a holy God. Because of who I am and whose I am. Can you say amen? Now let me rant for about 60 seconds and get it out of my system. Because a lot of good-meaning, ignorant Christians, they love Jesus, but they just don't understand who they are, and the Lord will make statements like this. Well, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. Get that stinking thinking out of your head. You are no longer an old sinner saved by grace. I know it sounds humble and pious, and I'm not judging the intent of your heart, but when you truly understand who you are and whose you are, you'll realize I'm no longer just an old sinner saved by grace. I am a child of the Most High God. I am a son or daughter of the King. Hallelujah. And when you understand who you are, it won't make you cocky and arrogant, but it'll make you a a, a confident man or woman of God. It'll place within you that confidence that says, I can go to God no matter what my need is. I can call upon the Lord no matter what the situation is. I've got a direct hotline to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords because he's my daddy and I'm his child. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not an old sinner saved by grace. God doesn't call me an old sinner. He calls me his son or his daughter. Can you say amen? amen. Number three, real quickly. Not only do we ha- are we redeemed by the blood. Number two, not only do we have fellowship through the blood, but thirdly, we're healed by the blood. Everybody say, we're healed by the blood. Isaiah 53, 5. It's the great messianic scripture was quoted even earlier today by Tara when she prayed. Isaiah 53, 5 says, He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Throw your hands up right now and just say, Lord, thank you for my healing. I won't go into great detail, but understand this, that Christ was whipped 39 times, beaten, with a cat of nine tails that at the end of it there was a rock or a glass that both were used that was sharp and, and it, was, it was sharpened to the point that every time that he was whipped those 39 times it would embed in his flesh and rip his flesh. I'm not a doctor by any means but they say there's about 39 different parts of doctor uh, 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 as far as your physical body in the medical science, and that 39 times as Christ was whipped, it provided a symbolism that every need you have physically was atoned for through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That with his stripes we are healed. First Peter then would go on and reiterate this scripture by saying, with his stripes ye were healed. Isaiah 53 says you are healed, but later it says you were healed. What does that mean? That means that when Christ went to the cross, it was a done deal. When he said it is finished, that blood made atonement not only for you to get to heaven, but for you to be healed on this side of heaven. Somebody say amen. Somebody holler, I'm healed through the blood. Receive that healing today. Receive it. Whatever you need, receive. say, Lord, I receive it in Jesus' name. I want you to see your healing not as something that you're trying to get, but literally something you already have. I want you to receive that healing as not that something God is going to do, but something he's already done. Something he's already done. Jesus is not going to another cross. Jesus is not paying another price. The price has been paid in full. You have been redeemed by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody holler, I'm healed through the blood. Fourthly, not only am I redeemed, not only do I have fellowship, not only am I healed, but fourthly, I'm protected by the blood. Somebody holler, protection. Protection. Exodus 12, 13. Exodus 12, 13, it's the scripture that's taken from the passage when the death angel would come in in the middle of the night. 
And the Bible says that they, as a token, as a symbolism, they had taken the blood and they had applied the blood over every entranceway. A lot of times we say the doorpost, but literally it was every entrance to the house. They would apply the blood. And God gave a promise here in verse 13. He said, the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. Say this together with me. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Say it again. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. The scripture says, the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Here's what the Bible tells us in context. Judgment had come, but God gave a means of escape from the judgment. And that, <laughs> that means of escape was found through the blood. God promised that in the midst of judgment, I'm going to give a way of escape. And that way of escape would be the blood. And when I see the blood, he said, I'm going to pass over you. Fast forward now to where we're living in the year 2021. There is judgment coming upon the land. We see the, 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 the consequences of sin, the consequences of rebellion against God in the land that we live, the consequences that says, I don't want to believe in God. I don't want to follow after God. It is a very anti-God culture that we live in today. And because of that, judgment has already began here in America and around the world. But listen very closely to this old time preacher today. God always gives a means of escape in the time of judgment and what is that means of escape it is through the blood and just like he did to Israel he said when I see the blood judgment is gonna pass over you I trust today's telecast has been a blessing and an encouragement to you you know there's nothing like God's Word that brings strength and brings help in our time of need I'd love to pray with you there's a link at the bottom of the screen with our email address. Why don't you send me a note? Let me know how we could pray for you. And we always love hearing from you. If you're ever in the Bradenton, Florida area, we'd love to have you join us for one of our in-person services, Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And if you're outside of our local area, there's plenty of opportunity to follow us online. Most of our Sunday services are archived and streamed live, so you can join us on Facebook or YouTube Live. And then we're on all of the other social media platforms like Twitter, Twitter and Instagram as well. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching today's telecast. I pray it's been a blessing to you and look forward to seeing you at this same time next week. The world's largest gospel music festival is coming to the number one Christian attraction, the Ark Encounter Theme Park in Williamstown, Kentucky, August 2nd through September 10th. 40 days and 40 nights of gospel music featuring virtually every major name in gospel music. The Isaacs, The Hoppers, Karen Peck and New River, Ernie Haas and Signature Sound, Triumphant Quartet, Mark Trammell Quartet, Jason Crabb, Brian Free and Assurance, Jeff and Sherry Easter, Joseph Habedank, The Primitive Quartet, Michael Combs, Ivan Parker, and many more. Amazing messages daily. Daily by speakers like Dr. David Jeremiah, Dr. Johnny Hunt, Pastor C.T. Townsend, Dr. Jerry Vines, Dr. Tim Hill, and even Ken Ham. Tickets to the Ark Encounter will give you free access to all of the concerts. Plus, you'll tour the life-size Noah's Ark, see the zoo, the camel rides, the food, the fun, and so much more. Don't miss the world's largest Christian music festival, August 2nd through September 10th. For more information, go to 40daysofgospelmusic.com or call 859-727-2220. A God who gives uncommon blessings deserves uncommon praise. Lord, may I never forget. All of my needs you have met When I cried in despair Found you were there every time I'll never get over the love You showered on me from above It's not ordinary The change you have made are poured out each day. Uncommon favor keeps coming my way. Your 
handsome in order. That's right. I don't have to walk them alone. Lord, I won't take for granted one thing. There's unending peace that you bring. Just to live in your presence is joy and I. 